You can enroll in school. Did you know that all school-age children in California have the right to enroll in public school? In this video, you will learn about education rights and resources that might help students who are experiencing homelessness. This video was created by the Sacramento County Office of Education's Project Teach. The McKinney-Vento Law was passed to make sure students who do not have a permanent address can go to school. Every school district and charter school has a homeless liaison who can help you, even if you are not sure if you qualify. Because of this law, you can enroll your children in school if you live temporarily doubled up with another family due to loss of housing or economic hardship. You are entitled to enroll in school if you live in substandard housing. Examples of substandard housing are houses or apartments that have been condemned or abandoned, or homes that do not have electricity, running water, or heat. You are also entitled to enroll in school if you live in a shelter, if you live in a motel or hotel, if you live in a car, a campground, a park, or other public place. Even if you live with someone who is not your parent, or if you have run away from home. Regardless of where you are staying, schools must be able to contact you even if you don't have a permanent address. One important reason for the school to have your contact information is in the case of an emergency. The school should know a cell phone number or the phone number of someone who can take a message for you, along with an address where you can get mail. Let's check your knowledge. In the next few slides, you will hear about some family situations and have the opportunity to answer questions about them. Stephanie and her family live temporarily with Stephanie's aunt because they can't afford their own place. Is Stephanie considered homeless? Yes, Stephanie is considered homeless because she is doubled up with her aunt due to economic hardship and living there is temporary. John and his family live in a camping trailer because they do not have other housing. Is John considered homeless? Yes, the trailer is substandard because it does not have running water and plumbing, is not parked on a lot with its own address, and is not designed to be a permanent home. Isabella and her mother live permanently with Isabella's grandmother. Isabella has her own bed, and Isabella's mother and grandmother share the costs of rent and utilities. Is Isabella considered homeless? No. Many families choose to live permanently with relatives. As long as there is adequate space and the housing is not substandard, this can work out well for all the family members, and a student is not considered homeless. Michelle and her children have been living in a car for two weeks. Are Michelle's children considered homeless? Yes, a car is considered inadequate shelter. Raymond's family sold their house and are living temporarily with his grandparents while their new home is being built. Is Raymond considered homeless? No, Raymond is temporarily doubled up with another family, but it is not due to an economic hardship or similar reason. Did you know that if your children are considered homeless, you can enroll them in school immediately, even without the personal documents normally required? You do not need proof of address, a birth certificate, immunization records, records from a previous school, or any other personal documents. The Homeless Liaison can help you get documents after your child is in school. Your children may receive transportation help to and from their school of origin. The most common form of transportation help is public bus passes for your children to ride to and from school. If you have children in elementary school, the schools will usually provide an adult bus pass so you can ride with them. If your children are considered homeless, they may attend their school of residence or their school of origin. The school of residence is the one serving the neighborhood where your children are staying. 
The school of origin is the school your children were attending when you lost your permanent housing or any school where they feel connected and have been enrolled within the previous 15 months. You do not need to change your child's school every time you move from one temporary place to another. Choosing the school of residence or school of origin is up to you. If the school will not let your children enroll or attend, call your homeless liaison immediately. You can get help. Stop and think. There are many things to consider when choosing between school of residence and school of origin. Some things to consider are, how long will you be staying where you are? How long is the commute to the school of origin? What transportation help is the school offering? It is up to you to decide what is best for your family. Let's check your knowledge to see what you have learned. In the next few slides, you will hear about some situations regarding school of residence and school of origin and have the opportunity to answer some questions. Carlos really likes his school, but his family has been evicted from their apartment and are staying in a motel in a different part of town. May Carlos continue to attend his current school? Yes. Why is the answer yes? Carlos is considered homeless because he lost his housing and a motel is not permanent housing. He has the right to continue to attend his current school, his school of origin. Carlos wants to attend his school of origin on the other side of town, but it's too far to walk. Can Carlos get help with his transportation to school? Yes. Why is the answer yes? Since he is considered homeless and is not attending his school of residence, the school will help with transportation to his school of origin. Elena's family was evicted and has to live with her aunt for a while. She wants to go to a school that is not her school of residence or her school of origin. Since Elena is considered homeless, can she attend any school she chooses? No. Why is the answer no? Elena has a right to attend her school of residence or school of origin. If she does not want to attend either of these, she would need to apply to attend a different school and provide any required documents. Sarah's family qualifies as homeless but does not have her immunization records or proof of address. Can Sarah be enrolled in school even without those papers? Yes. Why is the answer yes? Since Sarah qualifies as homeless, the school must enroll her without these papers. The school cannot require Sarah's proof of address and will assist in getting her vaccination form. Now let's talk about some more services that are available to you if your child qualifies as homeless. Your children have the right to participate fully in all school activities and programs for which they are eligible. Your child automatically qualifies for school meal programs. You do not have to complete forms to report the income of people in the home. You may get help with backpacks and school supplies. Also, you may learn about places that can help you with things like food, clothing, housing, and medical care. Call your homeless liaison to learn about these things. If your high school age children change schools due to homelessness, they have the right to receive credit for any high school work completed in another school, even if they change schools in the middle of the semester. They may also qualify for a reduction in the number of credits needed to graduate. They may also qualify for test fee waivers and receive priority registration in college. The homeless liaison and school counselor can tell you if your children qualify. If you lack permanent housing, what can you do to help your children in school? There are some things that only you can do to make sure your children succeed at school. First, you are responsible to make sure your children get to school every day and on time. During the first minutes of the school day, teachers commonly explain the plan for the day and provide other important information your children need to get the most out of learning for that day. 
When children miss school or arrive late, they can get confused and behind on learning. Second, you are responsible to stay informed about school rules, regulations, and activities. Most schools provide a parent handbook when you enroll. The handbook describes the school rules and how to get help. Schools send home important information every week. Every school day, you should take a few minutes to check on the homework your child needs to do and read any notices sent by the school. Third, you are responsible to ask for help when you need it. The school's homeless liaison and teachers will not know about your situation and needs unless you tell them. They will keep your information confidential from anyone at school who does not need to know it. Fourth, you are responsible to attend parent-teacher conferences and other school-related activities. You are an important partner with a school in your child's education. When you attend, you get information that is important for your child's success. And you send a message to your child that school is important. And fifth, you are responsible to enroll your children in school. Thank you for taking this time to learn about ways to help your child build a bright future. If you do not have permanent housing, tell someone at the school. We can help. This video was brought to you by the Sacramento County Office of Education's Project TEACH. Project TEACH is a grant recipient of the federally funded Education for Homeless Children and Youth grant program administered by the California Department of Education.